<laughs> hello, <laughs> hello, and welcome to Anchor, the Facebook Live pro um, platform on which we discuss all things love, marriage, sex, and relationships. They call me Uncle Ebo White, and I am very committed to helping you become your best self. Today, I begin a series, a series that we call Challenges in Relationships. Um, we'll be looking at the various challenges in all kinds of um, relationships. Um, we'll begin today with the challenge of finding the right person. How do you find the right person and how do you know you found the right person? That is what we'll begin with. Um, but I'd like to thank you for joining me. I don't take the fact that you joined me for granted. But today we have, um, we have good news for you. We have good news for you. So there is somebody on my team um, who, has, who has good news to share, and I'd like to share it. Uh, the reason why I'm bringing him up front here is that um, I don't want him to get too nervous. Otherwise, he'll be sitting down wondering, when am I going to call him and things like that. But I know something. Let's, let's, keep, him, let's keep him anxious a little bit while. <laughs> let, me <turn. laughs> let me turn my attention to, uh, we have two guests. We have um, a handsome young man called um, Johannes, um, or he prefers to be called His high, Highness when he's having a good dream. And then <laughs> we have Mavis as well. So please, let's welcome them. Let's go to uh, Mavis first. Mavis, hi. Hi, Uncle Boy. Yeah, Mavis, you are welcome. Thank you so much. Tell us just something small about, about yourself. Mavis Ama Tando, I'm really excited to be here. I'm happy to meet new people, to share new ideas, and to, first of all, learn something new. Okay. And so I look forward to today's um, session, and then I know that I'm going to learn something new. Well, you are welcome. You are very welcome. Oh, by the way, Mavis, when you came here, um, how many of my boys said you are beautiful? They were shy. I had two. Two? <laughs> All right, those, those two will get um, some credit today. Wow. Re um, no, listen, and this is the credit. This is the credit. The two get a chance to pawn the other, other four. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they get a chance to pawn. <laughs> I think I heard it. I heard it somewhere. All right, maybe you're welcome. Now, Johannes, let's, let's go to Johannes. Johannes, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Um, just introduce yourself and tell us something about yourself. Okay, so I'm Johannes Francis Kuonu. Um, I'm, I'm very excited to be here and most importantly, to have the chance to participate in this you know, session, to learn and probably chip in a few ideas as okay. time goes on. And I hope everyone should listen to this program. All right, okay. Thank you. So, oh, so you are Francis as well? Yes, I'm Francis as well. <laughs> Yeah, I prefer the uh, When you are pointing the man, please remember <laughs> to point him. Shelly, <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. And now, um, let's welcome on, um, on camera, um, Kabute. <laughs> Kabute. <laughs> Kabute, join me, join me, join me. Uh, Kabute, why, why are the guys so, so excited? Uh... Because um, my, my home was blessed with a lovely daughter this morning. Kabote is the latest father in Ghana. Um, and we thank God um, for, for Kabote and the wife. It's a miracle, really, um, because there was um, quite a bit of uncertainty about the whole process and how the child was going to be delivered. Um, but somehow God came through for Kabote and for his wife, Mansa. And so, to God be the glory. And Kabote, congratulations. How does it feel to be a father the second time? Oh, um, it's <laughs> it feels good. It feels good. Okay. I mean, I'm just, I'm just happy. I'm blessed. Um, I'm happy that my wife was able to. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, that miracle. Yeah. That miracle. I couldn't wait for it to be over. All right. Yeah. So you have two people calling you Dada. Yeah, it's amazing. It's yeah. it's it's funny. Um, they call you Dada or Daddy. Um, well, you know there's a difference. Yes, I know there's a difference. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. No, it's all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. 
Well, the, we, we share, it's an in-house joke. We, we share it with you at the appropriate time. But once again, um, to every one of you, um, we are so grateful you could join us. And to Francis and Mavis in particular, um, thank you very much for joining us. And um, today we are looking at the challenge of finding the right person, how to know the right person and how to choose the right person. Now, first, I'd like to begin with the, the obstacles to finding the right person. If there were no obstacles to finding the right person, trust me, everybody will, get, will find the right person. But there are serious obstacles, and that is the reason why it is not that easy to find the right person. It's the reason why so many people keep searching and um, wondering how they could meet the right person. So let's, let's run through about eight of the obstacles to finding the right person, shall we? One, limited supply. There aren't many correct people around. It's as simple as that. Um, one of the tragedies in life is that when people dress, you can't tell the correct one from the one who is not correct. You know, um, both male, women. But the point is that some people are not correct. And some people, you, you care the day you met them because it would make your life so miserable. So that's the first one. It's two, wrong focus. We, many of us have the, the penchant for looking for the wrong things. And so we put value on the wrong things. And by the time we realize that those things do not matter and we should have been looking for different things, it, it, is, it, is, it is too late. Three, your programming. All of us have our own programming. And the most common programming for people when it comes to the point of looking for um, a partner um, in love is that we, the program says you are not worthy, that you are, you are not adequate, you are not enough, or it is not for you, it is for some other people, or that, you know, great relationships, they are not even possible. They are not possible. Anybody who says he's having a great relationship is lying. Once you have that kind of programming, you are in trouble because you, it's an obstacle. It will stop you from finding the, the right person. And the programming might have come by way of the, the home you grew up in, the environment you grew up in, the kind of relationship you see around you can all become part of your programming. Four, emotional baggage. You may, you may if you've lived an, a very normal life, it's possible that by the time you are in your mid-20s, or late 20s, you've gathered quite a lot of emotional baggage. And there are three sources for emotional baggage. Emotional baggage are things you inherited from your past that keep haunting you in your current relationship. And there are three sources. One, your upbringing, um, the way your parents raised you, what kind of relationship you had with your caregivers, your primary caregivers. Two, your previous relationships how they went and things like that. They may, if somebody messed you up, it's possible that you are carrying this emotional baggage and it, very little things will trigger it. And then you become a monster. You disappoint yourself, you disappoint the people in your life. And then three, the experiences of those who are close to you. Now let's go to obstacle number five. And it's simply this, life is not fair. Life. Um, there is this cruel aspect to life, you know. The people we love don't love us. They love people who don't also love them, you know. <laughs> it, it, it's a very funny um, thing. And it, it's just life happening. Um, the, you don't meet a person, you love her till you have committed yourself to some, somebody, and then suddenly that person, that person turns up. Six, unrealistic expectations it can be an obstacle. Um, what are you looking for in a partner? Um, and it may be unrealistic. It may be unrealistic what kind of things you are looking for. And that could also become um, this thing, become um, an obstacle for you. And then seven is self-sabotage. You know, nobody would admit that, you know, I go, sometimes I sabotage myself in a relationship. But we do. Many people get into a relationship and they do and say things that have the sole purpose of destroying and driving people away from them. 
There, is, there are reasons for that. We won't go into that. But there are people who, because of what they've been through, um, run away from when a relationship gets tighter and is getting too close and too intimate. They would they will push you away and then go away. And I'm sure, I don't know if you've experienced this, maybe you yourself, um, you love this person. In the beginning, it was so good. Suddenly, you didn't want to see the person. Or you get into a relationship with somebody and you think everything is going fine. And then, for no apparent reason, the person begins to act up. The person begins to give you the cold treatment and begins to shut the door to you. And then, the final obstacle to finding the right person is that you keep ignoring the warning signs. You keep ignoring the warning signs. Sometimes, when you are relating to people and they are not the right part, part, partner for you, there are signs we all ignore. And we ignore because we are so eager to find the right person that we think, oh, let me continue, let me continue. Well, we've looked at the obstacles. Now let's look at a few red flags in your search for um, the right person. Because we'll keep on searching, we'll keep on searching. And there are dangers on the way. We've looked at obstacles, I'm going to look at dangers. There are red flags, things that should, you should watch against and things that, because they would mess you up, they won't, they won't help you. And I'm going to look at 12 of these. One, sacrificing or giving up your values, your principles, and in your integrity just to be accepted by this person or by the circles in which he, the, in which he moves, or just to fit in. You know, you, you, you've been raised to say no to drugs, so you don't do drugs. Then you come into contact with this person you're excited about, and then you discover that he and his friends are, are into drugs, and they say that, well, you've got to do this. You've got to do this. They begin to laugh at you, and you begin to, okay, it's all right, let me just do it once. No, whenever you find yourself moving in, a com in any company where you are obliged, you are being compelled to do something that you have never liked, and you've been raised not to give yourself to, please back off. That's enough warning sign. Let them go, because it will not help you. Two, red flag, be careful of sympathy or neediness, parading as love. Sometimes we, we come upon somebody who has so many needs, who has so many difficulties, and we get involved to help the people. We are helping them at the level of sympathy. But soon, you, we, they, be, they begin to mean so much to us that we think that, oh, it must be love. It's a, it's a problem that comes when a counselor becomes a lover. Wrong, wrong, wrong thing, because sympathy and even neediness. Neediness is where the person just needs you so badly. He may not forget about whether he's the right person for you or not, but he needs you and he's holding so tightly to you. And you think that, oh, okay, uh, you know, I mean so much to, uh, I mean so much to her, I mean so much to him. So I can't, I can't, I can't let him go. No, be careful. Sympathy. If you marry somebody, if you relate to anybody out of sympathy, in the end, none of you will be happy. In the end, you may, you may hurt this person even more than that person had been hurt in the past. So let's watch that. Three, rushing. Rushing the relationship. Now, <clears throat> or being rushed. Being pressured to move faster in a relationship than you want to go. A relationship must have its time, must take its time to grow from one point, one phase to the other. So if you find yourself in a situation where uh, even before you've quite made up your mind, it's as if you've been presented with a fait accompli. You know the situation where you haven't said yes and the person is introducing you as a, as a, as a, as a, as a husband, as a wife. And, uh, you have been, and then you've been introduced to the parents and the parents are calling you every day and they are calling you, must say, must say, must say. Uh, you, have been, you have been pushed in, into this. Be careful. You have been rushed. Oh, by the way, another red flag if you meet anybody and his parents are more eager for you to marry the, 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 that person, more than the person is, big red flag. They know why they are pushing him or her on you. 
So I am back of runaway. Four, when you are looking for the right person, be careful of finding yourself in compromising situations. Don't put yourself in compromising situations. Otherwise, you would, you would have scars, you know. Um, so for instance, let me give you a typical example. Um, Kabute, Kabute is traveling to Kumasi for business. Then he calls you and said, oh, hi, um, Mavis. I want to, would you like to go to Kumasi with me? Um, I'm going for business. Um, we'll be there the whole weekend. Oh, by the way, we'll be at the Porsche Hotel there. Um, and then you ask, well, so, what about your wife? Oh, my wife is at the hospital, just delivered. So um, she was with her mother, no problem. Now, be careful of taking that. You have just put yourself in a very compromising situation. No, Kabute, I use your name because today you are the man of the hour, so. <laughs> I may just as well have used Kanesen, but um, that, would, that would have made too many people happy. <laughs> so, that's why. so be careful. Um, you just met this person at the party, and uh, you get a call at about 11 p.m. and say, hi, what are you doing? Why don't you, you why don't, can I come and pick you, or can I come home? I've got this wine. I want us to drink. 11 p.m., what are you doing? Are you, are you a witch? Sleep. <laughs> sleep. We sleep at 11 p.m. Are you doing overtime? What kind of person are you? Watch it. Because what happens is that a promising relationship can be destroyed if you put yourself in a compromising situation. Because once what should not happen happens, you've lost grounds with this person and you've lost face with this person. Five, when the other party you have met wants to keep the fact that you are dating from anybody else, um, big red flag. Um, that person is hiding something. He doesn't want you to meet his friends. He doesn't want to meet your friends. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to be seen in public with you. You know the kind of person who brings you to the National Theatre to watch my play and gets, puts you down at the, at the gate and says, you go in, I'm going to park and come. You go, you, you go and take a seat. And then when you go, you just reserve, get a seat by me. And he makes sure you've gone in before he comes in so that nobody sees him coming in with you. Six, someone who has dated your sibling or your close friend and who is now pursuing you. Red flag. It doesn't matter what you think he is. Um, let him go. It, it, it will not end well, trust me. Seven, someone who tells you that he or she is in a wrong relationship and they will leave it for you. If anybody tells you, I am prepared to leave my current relationship for you, that person would one day also leave you for somebody else, and you have nobody to blame. You have nobody to blame. Well, the worst is somebody who says, my partner does not make me happy. You will discover, if you listen to that, uh, and you be, be, pick up a relationship with this person, in a few years, you will discover why his, his partner was not treating him or her right, uh, because he himself is not correct. Then beware of emotional manipulation. Um, the people who you meet at a party or you, begin, you go out with them once or twice and suddenly are beginning to emotionally manipulate you. The worst are those who say, if you leave me, I'll kill myself. Um, <clears throat> if anybody will kill himself if you leave them, please leave them quickly <laughs> and let them die quickly. I mean, it's that. Nine, sex. Um, sex messes up your f chances of finding the right person. Even if you find the right person, when sex comes in too early, it can destroy the thing. Sex, you see, there are, there are three dangers with sex. One is that if you, don't, if you don't observe the fact that sex has its place in a much more committed relationship, what will happen is that you become a victim of what I call the hit and run people. The people who come in just to have sex and go away. Um, you also have to realize that sex once sex comes in, the relationship has become a revolving door. The lady is now, through that same process, becoming more committed in the relationship. But through that same thing, the man is checking out of it. And then comes the third, the pregnancy trap. That is where you are, the girl t tells you that the thing you and me do germinate. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then you know, uh, really? But you can't deny. And because of that, a lot of men have accepted other, other men's um, pregnancy. Yeah. Ten, the red flag, 
watch deception. There are people who are so smooth. Listen, whenever you meet someone who is so smooth, please run away. Because that person is hiding something. Or somebody who comes and is talking big and making fantastic promises. Uh, please be careful. The, co the code here is this. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Um, 11, um, red flag, the danger of rape. And this goes especially to women. Um, I know women get excited about people too easily. Be careful. There's always that danger. So you should always put certain checks in place so you don't find yourself. Listen, the majority of rape victims were raped by people they thought they could trust. People they knew. They were not, they were not raped by foreign um, strangers. But people they thought, oh, the way I am with him, no, no, he wouldn't do this. Well, he will. He will. So just protect yourself. Just know that this is a danger. Twelve. Uh, what I call the devils who are parading as angels of light. These are dangerous people you should run away from, but they are smooth. They seem so correct. These are the people who can quote every Bible verse for you. They sound so religious. They sound so gentle and so good. They, you think they will never trample on anything, but they are dangerous. And you've got to be careful. All right. Now, let me give you the secret for finding the right person. Here is the secret for finding the right person. Um, if you are searching for the right person, there's a secret. And the secret is this. Stop looking. Stop searching. That's the secret. To find the right person, stop searching. Because it is not about finding the right person. The truth is, it's about you being the right person. Because love is an attraction. And you attract to you who you are. The person, the kind of people you are attracting to yourself are people who reflect you. So the better you become as a person, the greater your chances of attracting great people. And that is why you've got to stop trying, looking, and begin now to work at yourself because you would attract your kind. So raise your bar, raise the bar of your life. And you realize that you are raising the, kind of, the bar for the kind of people who comes. The right person will always attract the right person. A rogue would also attract a rogue. It begins with you being the right person. So let's run through uh, some quiz to determine whether you are the right person. So take this quiz um, seriously. Um, let the question keep you, make you um, ask, um, um, do some introspection. Um, I'm taking you through 24 of them. One, what do you know about yourself? What really do you know about yourself? Put it down. One day sit down, write um, me. Let the title be me. Write an essay about you. What do you know about yourself? Two, how do you feel about yourself? Because you see, people will give to you the way you feel about yourself. If you celebrate yourself, everybody celebrates you. If you look down upon yourself, everyone will look down upon you. So how do you feel about yourself? Three, what do you want in life? What do you want in life? What do you want in life by way of career? What do you want in life by way of what kind of family you would want? What do you want in life? Articulate it. Four, can you live without anyone in your life? Can you? Have you, have you made your life side that it doesn't matter if somebody comes, yes, but otherwise you are fine. Can you live without anybody in your life? Five, do you have values in your life? And if, you, if so, what are they? And if you do, never sacrifice them. But if you don't, sit down, look, what values are worth my, me hanging my life on? Because if you don't stand for anything, you will fall for everything. Six, and this is a very important one. Do you have a life at all? Do you have a life? Or are you waiting for somebody to now come and give you a life? Do you have a life? For instance, do you know how to spend your time? Do you know how to, do you know how to go out and have fun and enjoy yourself? Without get, and not, I'm not meaning get into trouble, but really, go and have fun. Do you, do you have a purpose? Are you chasing any goals in your life? Or are you just sitting, waiting for somebody 
to come and make your life for you. Seven, are you economically sound or are you dependent? Um, to get the right person, please answer this question. Because the more economically sound you are, the better your relationship will be. Eight, do you have goals and are you working towards them? There are people with goals. There are, two, there are three kinds of people. There are those who have no goals. Then there are those who will tell you about all the goals they have, but they are not working out towards any of them. But then there's this wonderful group who have goals and they are working towards them. That should be you. Nine, do you have any positive models of a love relationship in your life? Do you have any relationship that you can look to and say, I want, you know, if my relationship can be like that relationship, oh, I think I'll be a happy person. Because you are drawn towards what you admire. And so, do you have anything that you are being drawn towards? Ten, do you know what it means to hold yourself accountable to another person? Because once you get into a relationship, that's what you're asking for, that you're going to hold yourself accountable to another person. Eleven, what are your personal hygiene habits? Your personal hygiene habits. Um, your bedroom, what shape is, in your be is your bedroom? Your bed, when was the last time you changed your bed sheet? Um, how often do you take your bath? Um, do you piss before you sleep? Do you piss after eating? Um, your personal hygiene. Do you wash your hands from the washroom? You know, when you are, when you are coughing, do you know how to cover your mouth when you are coughing? What are your personal hygiene habits? Twelve. Have you got your personal packaging right? And I'm talking about how to groom yourself. Your personal packaging, that's grooming. Have you got it right? You know, you choose your clothes. There's, there's a certain kind of clothes that will make you look sweet and great. Then there are clothes that you also wear and uh, you become insignificant. Have you learned how to groom yourself? You've got to learn. Thirteen, what do you want in a life partner? You must articulate that. You must know. Otherwise, you fall in love with anybody, and then suddenly you realize, you know, why? My, my, my husband, he... No. Did you make up your mind what kind of person you wanted? Fourteen, what do you know of the opposite sex? What do you know of the opposite sex? Because all things being equal, you're going, to, you're going to into a relationship with a member of the opposite sex. What do you know of the opposite sex? Fifteen, what do you want in a relationship? What do you want in a relationship? If all you want in a relationship is fun, you are in trouble. You will get somebody who will give you fun and give you heartbreak as well. Um, is it sex? If all you want in a relationship is sex, um, then you are in trouble. Because sex can be very empty if there is nothing else in the relationship. To own somebody, there are people going into a relationship so that you can have somebody they can call my own. Hey, you can't cage anybody. Nobody can whatever be your own. If you want your own, let me give you a secret. Go and build a puppet and keep it in your house. That's your own. You can control it to say whatever. Um, or are you in a relationship? Do you want to be in a relationship because you met this person? you really don't want to live without. That's a whole new thing. Or, do you, are, you, are you here to satisfy peer pressure? The pressure is too much, so I, I, want, I want to be in a relationship, so I'll go off. Sixteen, what is your end game in wanting to be in a relationship? Don't go into a relationship when you don't have an end, end game in mind. You can't be in a relationship and you don't know what, what will come out of this. Have an end game in mind. Where is it going to end? In marriage? If not, does the other person know that this is going nowhere? 17. If you have been in a relationship before, have you really moved on? Have you? Have you gotten over the previous relationship? Do yourself a favor. Don't get into a new one until you've moved on. 18. If you have been in a relationship before, why did it end? Why did it die and why did it end? And 
what was your role? That's 19. What was your role in the collapse of the previous relationship? It's very easy to blame your partner and say, he did this and he did that and that, 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 and he didn't do this and that, 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 that. But it takes two to tango. So what was your contribution? 20. What have you learned from your previous relationship or relationships? 21. What did your previous relationship teach you about yourself? 20 is about the lessons. But this one, what did it teach you about yourself? Because the way the relationship end, ended and the way you reacted revealed something about you. 22, do you have any communication skills? Do you, are you able to carry on a conversation with somebody else? Especially somebody you haven't even met before. Can you, can you go into a party, take a seat at a table, and just make friends with the people around and begin to communicate with them? 23, are you a good mixer? Do you have social skills? And 24, do you have a sense of humor? Do you have a sense of humor? Now, I'd like to do a very quick trip on how, where to find the right person. Where to find the right person. There are, there are some usual places, but there are unusual places as well. So let me give you the places that you know. The church. Um, it's a good place, but these days it's become a dangerous place. <laughs> because every wolf in sheep clothing is also going to the church, because they know they'll find new, new, good guys there. So be careful. But the church is a, is a good place. Um, but go there only when you are yourself the right person. Otherwise, you attract your kind, who is also come to church just to trap somebody like you. Um, school, you know, especially tertiary, tertiary institution. When you are there, don't just go there to study. Mm. Hey. Open your eyes small. Yes. Socialize yes. small. Thank you. Uh, by the way, that came from somebody who spent eight years in the university and did not make any friends. <laughs> your place of work, the office. The office is also a good place to, to find somebody, the workplace. Either somebody on the staff or some of the customers that you serve. They, sometimes people come to your office and they are watching. You never know. But be careful at that. Um, social clubs. Um, for, um, Ronnie can write a whole theory on this. Um, social media these days. Social media. I said I'd be careful with social media. Um, because you never know. <laughs> Someone's, someone's profile picture may not be that person. Um, be careful. Um, if animals can, make, can, can, can do social media, many of us would have been dating animals because we, we are not careful about um, the person, how far we go on social media. Six, parties. Parties. Seven, your siblings and relatives network. Tap into your siblings' network. Tap into your relatives' network. Tap into their network. They are friends. So if you're a boy and you have sisters, you have cousins, um, get close to them. Get close to their friends. You never know. You know, um, something may spark. Nine, your friends' network. Your friends' network. So, um, for instance. If you're a friend to Abiziga, let Abiziga introduce to you all her crazy friends. And, and you sister, never and know. Sister. And her sisters. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then her sisters. So yes. tap into that as well. <laughs> um, nine, where I come from? Funras. Yes. <laughs> Funras. <laughs> and other social function. <laughs> Ten. Community involvement. The more you involve yourself in your community, the more your chances of meeting more people and meeting wonderful people. <laughs> Eleven, distant relatives. Um, in some places in Ghana, it is permitted to marry a distant cousin. So I'm um, tapping into that network as well. Events. If you attend events, you sit by you sit by two people, somebody on your right, somebody on your left. There will be somebody in front of you. There will be somebody behind you. Don't just go and sit down. As you sit down, turn to them. So, oh hi, hi. Then when you sit down, the person next to you, oh hi, I am Ebo White. Oh hi, I am so and so. You never know how those um, things where they can lead. 
Now, how do you tell, how can you tell the right person? If, the, if you've met the right person, how can you tell? 11 points here. One, you have inner peace. There will be a certain peace within, very deep within, that tells you this is cool, this is cool. Two, that person will be interested in everything about you. He's interested in everything about you. Three, that person, if he's the right one, will be interested in meeting your family. He will be interested in meeting your family. Four, that person will be interested in meeting your friends, will be eager in meeting your friends. Five, that person will be interested in helping you to know them. They will create situations for you to get to know them more and better. Six, that person will be eager to let you meet his friends or her friends. He wants them to meet you. Seven, that person will be eager to introduce you to his family and introduce you right. Not that this is the wo woman I'm going to marry. Though this is a friend, um, a good friend. Eight, you yourself will be eager to let him meet your people. Do you understand? It's different if the person wants to, is eager to meet your people. But if this person is the right person, you yourself would also be eager to let him meet your people, that is, your family, your friends, your colleagues. Nine, uh, you are eager to meet their people. So eight was that you are eager to let him meet your people, but you are also, now nine, you are eager to meet um, their people, their family, their friends, their colleagues. Um, ten, you'll be under no pressure to make your up your mind. That person won't put you under any pressure. You know, there are people who, who say, well, you better make up your mind, though, because otherwise, I mean, um, by the end of this week, I'm going to, I'm going to look at my other options. No, no pressure, no pressure. And 13 and 11, that person will leave you with no lingering questions. You know, there are people who leave you with lingering questions. They are, they are correct, ah, but there's this thing. Why doesn't he always call when he says he will call? Why does he always say, I'll call you back, and never calls me back? You know, why is it that he doesn't pick certain calls when we are on a date, when he's in my company, but will pick other calls as well? Lingering questions, because those questions are always significant. I would like to end with how to, let's say, all you follow these steps, now you found the Mr. Right or Miss Right. How do you keep that person? It's one thing finding the right person. It's another person keeping the right person the right person. A lot depends on you. So how do we nurture? So I'm calling this nurturing that relationship. Um, one, nurture yourself. It begins by you nurturing yourself. Be a happy person. Find a way of being happy with yourself. That's how to nurture a relationship. It begins with you. Because, you see, you can't give what you don't have. If your tank is empty, there's no way you can help anybody. Two, be open. Be open. Being secretive and being crafty doesn't help in a relationship. Unless you are just in this for the fun of it and you are a hit and run person. But if you want something meaningful, be, be open. Three, have a sense of humor and playfulness. Have a sense of humor and playfulness. Um, tease each other. Tease each other and, um, and have fun. Be, 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 and then four, respect. There must be respect. And the respect must be mutual. Five, trust. And the trust must be mutual. Six, good communication. You should know how you can chat and how you can get to the root of issues, just discussing things. Seven, demonstrate caring and support. Caring, the person said, I'm going to write an exam. As that morning, call the person and say, I'm praying for you. As soon as the exam's finished, call and find, how did it go? You are demonstrating caring and you're also sh showing support. Eight, own up to your mistakes and faults and apologize when you have to. Be, don't, don't be one of those people who find it so difficult to say, I am sorry, and mean it when you, when you say it. Nine, show appreciation. Be one who, is, who can be grateful, even for the little things people do for you. Ten, groom yourself right. 
there is a reason why the person was attracted to you. Please keep your attractiveness. Keep your attractiveness. 11, remember you are relating to a human being, so don't expect perfection. The person may slip up every now and then. So it's a human being. Learn to forgive and to move on. 12, create room for your separate identities and lives. Don't build this kind of relationship where the other party whole identity, has to sacrifice the career, has to sacrifice his life for you and for the relationship. It will kill it. No. So create room for your separate identities. Thirteen is like that. Give each other space from time to time. The more space we can give each other, sometimes the healthier your relationship can be. Fourteen, make time to be with each other. Sometimes love is spelled time quality time. That's all. Spend time with each other. Make time for each other. And when you are with each other, please give each other your full attention. Learn to put your phones away. Learn to put them away so that you can focus on each other. Learn to put off the television. Learn to put off your laptop. Focus and look at each other's face and talk and spend time together. Fifteen, pull a surprise every now and then. Every now and then. It doesn't have to be huge. You know, um, if, you are, if you are dating somebody like uh, Mavis, even um, ice cream will do, will do the trick, you know. Um, if it is a busy guy, ice cream must go with flowers, you know, okay. that kind of thing. And, cake. and a cake. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Sixteen. Make friends with like-minded couples. In other words, seek out couples who are like you and create a friendship so that you can, you can plan days together. You can plan out things together. Not just you and your partner, but the, the other partners. And it's always wonderful and sweet to be in that kind of company. 17, learn how to deal with conflicts. In other words, if you have to fight in your relationship, fight to save the relationship. Don't fight to prove that you are right. Don't even fight to prove that you are smart. Because if you are smart, your partner in a relationship, you've only smarted yourself. They can't say that if you roast your tongue for meat, that is no meat. 18, don't betray confidences. When this person shares something with you in confidence, Please die before you reveal it. Don't re say it. 19, always show emotional maturity. Even when you are angry, please don't blow your top. And don't be one of those people who says, and I, I gave him the full length of my tongue. You know, I gave him a piece of my mind. You see, the problem with giving people a piece of your mind is that very soon you won't have any mind. <laughs> see, because you are distributing a piece <laughs> like that. And very soon you have no mind to give. So don't say, I gave him a piece of my mind. It means you don't have a whole mind now. A piece is gone. <laughs> Keep the pieces. And 20, always look for a mentor for the two of you, for your relationship. A mentor or a counselor. You can find it in your office. You can find it in church. Um, you can find it among your family. So that is our, our part one of challenges, challenges in relationships. Today, we have looked at how to find the right person, and once you find the person, how to keep the person. Next week, God willing, we'll come your way with another challenge in relationships. I hope you've enjoyed this one. We'll take a very short break, and when we come back, we'll take your questions and um, your contributions. So, once again, thank you very much for staying with me. Um, please um, stay on.
Get the best-selling novels, The Deal, and Perfect Couple by Uncle Libba White at 40 Ghana cities each. Available at all shell shops, selected bookshops, and total filling stations. For inquiries, call 050-554-6010 or WhatsApp 050-554-6030 for your copies. Stay with us. So um, let's begin with the let the questions come. Um, who has a question for me? All right. Francis has a question. So Francis, your question, please. No, no, it's okay. Francis, go. Okay. Um, you didn't mention anything about age specificity and choosing the right partner. Um, because age doesn't matter, really. It doesn't. Um, there have been cases where there, there's been age gap and it has worked. There have been cases also where there's no age gap and it hasn't worked. You understand me? So age is not that big a deal. There are challenges if the age gap is big. But there are people who may be young in years and yet in terms of exposure and depth of mind, um, they are very mature and it, it, they make it work. So that, that is not a big deal. Um, I'd like to know how you can show support to each other and still maintain your separate identities. Okay, I gave, I gave one example. I'm going to write an exam. It's, unless the person doesn't care about life, he'll wake up the morning of exams and is, is scared. So a call from you to say that I'm praying with you, it will be fine. That's support. I'm going for an interview. Um, the morning of the interview, um, calling to let me know, oh, I, I, I pray for you this morning. The interview would work. And then as soon as I come for, out of the interview, um, I get a call from you or a message. How did it go? Um, that's fine. I'm going to the hospital. Um, once I say I'm going to the hospital and you don't, okay. You haven't shown support. Oh, why? What, what is wrong? Oh, I have to go and da, 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 da. da. Um, then I, it comes out. Sometimes you could even say, oh, can I come with you? Um, just keep your company and go with you and give you the support. So the support doesn't need to be money. It has to be you. Um, you're caring. It, it helps. It makes all the difference. Yes. Okay. Kweku Eyete says, Uncle, what if he or she doesn't want the relationship to be low, to be known? Low-key things. Well, the... Have you found out why? There must be a reason. So let's explore the reason. Because you see, it could also be because there are, there's already an existing relationship and that person doesn't want this new one she's exploring to leak out. Um, so that's why you've got to understand. Understand what you are, you, are, you are dealing with. It is possible that she doesn't want it to be known because she's not said yes to you. There, there isn't any relationship yet. So there's nothing to let people know. But once you know we have a relationship, the person must give you a very good reason to keep it a secret. Abisi Bwache says, Uncle, in a long distance relationship, how do you pull a surprise? Um, sometimes you can organize um, a courier service. Um, so Amazon, buy something on Amazon, let it go. Um, to that address. You could use all kinds of courier services um, for that. Um, and when you can manage it, um, travel to that place um, unexpectedly. That would also help. From Francis, Helen. Uncle Lebo, economically sound dear, is subjective. Please expand it. In other words, don't go into a relationship where you would have to depend on your partner for salt, for pepper, for bread. <laughs> Don't. And, oh, by the way, um, ladies, whenever a man is taking you out for the evening, always make sure you have money in your pocket. So that if you go there and he's messing around, you could tell the person 
put me down right here. You can then call Uber or pick a taxi and go home. There are a lot of ladies who have been messed up by a, by a twerp, and they could say, well, I couldn't do, I didn't have anything on me. I didn't have anything on me, so I couldn't have gotten down. Always arm yourself. That's, that's what I mean. Be economically sound. Um, Juliet Ofori says, oh, uncle, God bless you. You've helped me grow within a very short time. You're welcome, Ju Juliet. Um, Amanda says, good afternoon, Uncle Ebo. Please, can you live or marry or be in a relationship with someone you don't love? Because the Bible says men are supposed to do the loving and women the submission. Amanda. <laughs> Amanda, the answer is yes. Um, yes. Um, but at least do yourself a favor. It might be somebody you could also submit to. Because I can't see how you can submit to somebody if you hate that person. Hello, Uncle Bo. If you are in a relationship and your partner tells you everything about her to you, example, previous partners, many abortions she's had, and her sex life, what should you do? You should have shut her up. She shouldn't have done that. That's too much information. And this goes to all of you. Be careful how much of your past you, you, you share, especially if it is truly your past. Your current partner doesn't need to know everything. The danger is that if you share it, it will be used against you. But uncle, should it be the case that men should always take women out? I would say, do you have a problem with that? <laughs> no, not really, no. Um, the, yeah, it's wonderful when a, a woman calls you and says, you know, I t I'm taking you out this evening. It is always wonderful. In Ghana, it doesn't happen, often. But um, every now and then, it, it happens, it happens. Um, for instance, we have somebody on our team that we call Jolof. Um, uh, is it Jolof or Fried Rice? Jolof, Jolof. Jolof yeah. yeah. And there's a, a whole legend behind it. So, <laughs> so no, there's nothing wrong with it. Uncle from me, a comment from me. He says, Uncle, what about hospitals? The nurse that takes care of you, you never know. Um, one of my, one of my um, dearest mentors, dearest mentors, um, found a wife uh, uh, whilst he was on admission. Uh, he, he had had a motor accident in which his wife had died, but he was um, on admission for a long time. And there was this nurse who, who took so good care of him that by the time he got out of the hospital, he knew, I'm going to, I have to, I'm going to marry this woman. Yeah. Because the nurse, and, they, and they've been married for a number of years now, and they, they're doing very well. Okay. All right. <clears throat> when we started the relationship, getting to know each other more like close pals, he updated his status with his ex-girlfriend, saying all sorts of things like, I miss you, you, I miss you more, you are close, baby, I will always cherish you. We spoke about it, and he said he was sorry, and it won't happen again. Uncle, I traveled to the USA for two months, and he didn't know the exact date I was coming. He thought I would come back on, on Saturday, but I came back on Thursday and gave him a surprise visit on Friday evening. He was surprised to see me and also happy though, but when I wanted to enter the room, he prevented me from entering it, saying that his room was messed up. I insisted and went to his room, but before he, before he started apologizing, saying he's hanged the picture and that's... When I see it, I will get angry. So that his story. I started searching for what he's talking about, only for me to see the picture of his ex-girlfriend on top of his curtain rod with his graduation picture on the right side of the lady's graduation picture. They both attended the same school, graduated in the same year in Korea, but the lady in question is Jamaican and lives in Jamaica. I asked why he did this, and he said he was cleaning his room and changed the room settings, so he placed it there. Uncle. From that time, I feel insecure. Please, what should I do? Walk away. Walk away. I mean, um, walk, walk away. Walk, he's, not worth, he's not worth it. 
he's not worth it. Uncle, if I'm in a relationship and if I'm in a relationship and find out um, I haven't moved on from my past one, what do I do? Um, in the first place, you shouldn't have found yourself in a relationship. But if you are already, um, don't punish the current one for the mistakes of the previous one. And then begin to get the previous relationship completely out of your system. Completely out of your system. Give the current one the benefit of the doubt. He is not like the 12 you left or who left you. Give him the benefit of the doubt. We don't. Mm. Are we? Are we done? Ah, from me again. Yes. Uncle, people also also like the food vendors. Very strategic love. They, yes. They Indeed. help us, the students. Pa. Yes. Yeah. Sela girlfriend. Being Sela girlfriend. Watch a seller girlfriend, etc. Strategic feelings. What do you see? Yeah, strategic. But it's the reason why you are struggling in life. Because <laughs> 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 ah, what will be quite see? I was just saying. You know, because because you didn't tell them that you are using them to finish the course. Do you, do you understand? So let's be careful. Some of these things, karma, karma will chase you. Mm -hmm. So what will happen is that. You fall in love with a girl who doesn't love you, and she will chop all your money. Yes. Uh, that's karma. It's called karma. Fried rice, fried rice. <laughs> Uncle, um, from <laughs> Esther. Uncle, please, the men who ask me questions like, how many men have you dated before? Me, I tell a very, very big lie. Am I on point? <laughs> <laughs> the problem with this is that one day, one day, they will discover. But uh, they shouldn't ask you. And if they ask you, Ask them why they want to know. Tell them it's, it's, it's not of any consequence. It's in your past, and you don't want to go back into your past. Please, uncle, there is this friend of my brother who says he prayed to God about me, mm. and God showed me him several signs that he should marry me. He knows I have a boyfriend, but still he asked me to think about it. <laughs> the truth is that I don't feel anything for him. He's a true Christian, so I'm confused. He also helped me travel outside the country to further my studies. Uncle, what should I do? He's a really good person. <laughs> on, on what condition did he help you to go outside to further your studies? Because that's not two and a half pesos, so that's quite a lot of money. <laughs> so on what condition? With what understanding? Just because you are the friend of the, of, uh, the, the sister of his, of his friend, is that, is that really the case? I suspect there's more to this than you are telling us. I really suspect there's more to it. But let me address just a small issue of people who come to you and say, God says. You know, after, after Eve, God got out of the marching <laughs> business. <laughs> when, Eve, when Adam told God, the woman you gave me. Now, God says, go and bring. I'll bless it. <laughs> so, no, I, I will be very suspicious with anybody who says, I dreamt. I'll ask you, go and check what you ate because <laughs> the food you ate or even your medical health because there are, there are illnesses that can make you dream, you, you know, and have certain dreams. And people said, God spoke to me. Listen, I would like you to adopt the uh, Mary strategy. If God truly spoke to you, he must speak to the other party as well. Because God spoke to Mary, God also spoke to Joseph. God does not speak to one party. So if he comes and says, God spoke to me, say, oh, that's wonderful. I'm waiting for him because I'm also his child. I'm waiting for him to speak to me too. And when he speaks to me, I'll let you know. And then we'll see what we do. Uh, so let's, let's get this thing right. One of my... One of my uh, my, 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 my friends, one of my dear friends, um, happens to be Apostle to me, um, who used to be the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Now, he, God spoke to about his wife. So he went and proposed to the woman based on what God has said to him. He said, as soon as he proposed, the woman said yes. Right then, then, said yes. Then, 
later on, he said, he, he went back to the woman and said, ah, but you, you said the yes too quickly. Oh. <laughs> women, they would say, I'll pray about it. And you didn't even say you would pray about it. You just said yes. He said, because two weeks before you came to me, God had shown me you are the one who, who, who I will marry. Wow. Two weeks before you came to me, God had spoken to me. So I had told God I was waiting, that her confirmation would be that you will come. So when you came, it was a confirmation of what God has said. Levi it can never be one yes. way. This is spiritual love. It can <laughs> never be one way. If God spoke to him, and it is really God and not his own imagination. Because you see, me, if I wasn't married and I met a girl with beautiful legs, God would speak to me. I, I can be honest with you. you know? God would speak to lava, me. Lava, God, God, God in treble me. voice. Oh, he would, <laughs> he would speak to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, August, she came back. She said he helped her uh, to go outside, not with money, but only with guidelines on the process. Okay. All right, but the principle is that tell him that if God truly spoke to him, he should, God will speak to you too. And if God hasn't spoken to you, don't feel blackmailed. This is, um, it can be spiritual blackmail. Mm. Nana Ampon says, Uncle, I have a neighbor who is a nurse. We've never talked to each other, but we are fond of staring at each other very much. <laughs> I nearly fell the last time I met her. What is happening to me, Uncle? La. Your, your eyes are failing. <laughs> your, your sense of direction is going. <laughs> okay. Nana. Nana, listen to your heart. Your heart is speaking to you. Listen to your heart. Listen to your heart. <laughs> Uncle, please. What if he spends more time with his friends than with me, especially when it's a getaway? But when I am with him, he's nice. What? Um... I don't quite get it. No, no, no. I think she means when she's with him, he keeps saying, get away. But. No. No. I don't think so. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. When they go out, he's spending time with the friends. Yes. All right. So next time when you're get going away, you to go with your friend. Hey. Ah. And because when he gets there, he will pack you and go and spend time with his friends. So when he packs you, tell him, okay, you go. Um, Adjua, Adjua. I also brought Adjua and Mary. We, we, are also, we are also going to have fun. Or don't go at all. Don't go on the getaways. Because what's the, what's the point? I don't think there's much to it beyond maybe he just doesn't, re he's not just, he's not been schooled on how to treat a, a woman well. And hasn't realized that if you take a woman out, give her your fullest attention. From Evelyn, uncle, he cheated on me. I found out and he never directly admitted it though. It's though he apologized. We are still together. However, another person has come into my life and he's a wonderful friend. I still love the one who cheated on me and I'm still with him. What should I do? I am confused. That's Evan. Yes. Evan, that's a fantastic question. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. So, <laughs> so we'll end it here. Um, and I'd like to say thank you to every one of you who have stayed with, with us. I don't take your staying with us for granted. Um, and uh, have a wonderful week. And then, uh, God willing, I'll, we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Hello. They call me Uncle Ibo White. I am the CEO and artistic director of Rogoman Production. Hello, they call me Uncle Ebo White. I am the CEO of Roman Productions, but I'm also very much committed to helping you become